Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is the ultimate Unity tutorial for beginners and welcome to episode 35. In this tutorial we are going to add in that little voice line which we missed out in the last tutorial and we're also going to build up a little village to basically get our fetch quest from this NPC going. Don't forget, click on the subscribe button and click that bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial still to come in this series and indeed everything else on game development on my channel. With that in mind, let's get to work. So let's quickly start by adding in that audio line that uh, silly me forgot to record with the awful voice acting. So it's just in the same place as last time. I'm going to drag and drop the line into here. And if you remember, just to quickly recap how we did it, we go to our NPC and we have to adjust the amount here in our uh, array. Remember, we can adjust this up and down as we go along. So to get this just right, let's add in that extra voice line there in the voice in the first person controller. Add in that third line and let's quickly rename. Uh, I realize this is probably line uh, one, but I guess it doesn't really matter to be honest. As long as you know which lines are which, they're labeled here, it shouldn't really matter too much. Um, so yes, now we go to NPC002, let's add that one in. So size is going to be three, so element two is now going to be that line three. So let's go into that uh, script and let's quickly add in that line of code to be able to play that voice clip. So we can use the same as what we've done before, voice line one dot play. Let's take that. Let's place it right there and change it to two because it relates to the second element or rather the third element named two, element two, um, which is the third line. So let's quickly check that out and make sure that it works as intended with obviously my terrible, terrible voice acting. Oh, I remembered we're going to have to move our first person controller back over, aren't we? Just so we can kind of skip a lot of the uh, game, which is naughty, but hey. <laughs> and there we go. So let's try this out now. Hello there. My name is Emily and I patrol a village. Can you go to the next village and collect some wood, please? Yeah. Thank you. I will see you when you return. So that's what we're going to do next. We are going to make that village where we can go collect some wood. So we'll have that village maybe around the other side of these mountains because, well, why not? So this tutorial is going to be a lot, not really a recap per se, but I want to show you something really, a, a nice asset that I found in the asset store, which I feel is at least going to bring us something useful to the game. So we need to look for a village. So let's go to the asset store and let's type in village and obviously we like free assets uh, obviously you can pay if you want to that is entirely up to you but i'm going to go ahead and use just this simple one here village houses pack there are others here if you want to uh, try them perhaps uh, i think we've used this before um, we're going to go with this one obviously i've gone ahead and downloaded it uh, it's only 12 megabytes so if you want to use the same as me by all means, import, and let's place our village somewhere over here. Now, if you remember how we have dealt with the terrain previously, um, that was quite a while ago. And like I said, with this tutorial, I, I would like to kind of go over the terrain a little bit more because it has changed since we originally did it. And a lot of the uh, terrain can actually be changed through this little paintbrush right here. You have a menu to change things, which does make things a little easier, but I kind of feel that the terrain as it is now is not quite as easy to use as it used to be. So I kind of feel it's a little bit, it could be better. So either way, let's, uh, let's have some grass going on here, uh, all the way around here. So you can see how it's, how it's done here really. Let's take some of this and let's change the uh, brush to that. Let's increase the brush size but let's decrease the opacity just to have a little bit of variation. Probably decrease the brush size a little bit more. There we go. And as for something like trees and the grass, 
they're in the same sort of place anyway so we don't need to worry about them too much at all we still do the same kind of principle that we used to like so let's uh decrease the density there there we go just a couple of bushes and the grass as we can see so i'm just going to change the brush once again uh decrease the brush size dec uh, in fact i'll keep the opacity full and we can just kind of work with it like so so yeah that's basically the new um terrain in a nutshell it isn't exactly the best it's not the worst it is kind of cool the little changes they've made but i do kind of like the old way of doing it but Never mind. That's just the way things are. Obviously, this version of Unity is much better than the ones we had used previously. Um, so I'm just going to paint a little section here. Uh, a nice kind of grassy colour. So this is where our next village is going to be, which is where we're going to start the next section of our development, because that is going to be all about the fetch quest. So let's bring a nice little village in. So we've got a nice big house. Let's bring it into there. Um, we've got the exact same one because looking at these, uh, one's the FBX and the other is a prefab. So I guess it doesn't really matter too much which one you use. Uh, the prefab itself comes... Uh, Quite versatile because we can actually use these as a door so i think we probably will at some point and it's the same with um the fbx but you have to remember sometimes that you're going to need to right click and unpack prefab again that's something new with you well i say new um it, it's not really new per se but as opposed to when we started this series it is kind of new from that so just add a couple of things from here, I guess. You know, we've got the fence. Change the fence around if you want to. Do what you need to do. Uh, old house again. So let's have that there. Let's rotate because I guess we can. <laughs> you know, just you build your village. I'm not going to tell you how you should be building these things, guys. Um, it's, it's, it's entirely up to you. Let's bring the well in there as well. So, uh, I was going to press play and quickly have a look how this village looks. Uh, I think we may need to change a little bit of our settings as well. I'm not completely convinced with the uh, post-processing now. I just kind of feel it's a bit OTT. Um, so we may actually look at refining that next tutorial. Uh, but for now we have our village. But what we're looking for is some wood. So let's actually bring in a little wood pile. And, you know, I guess you could search in the asset store. You could take this well and you could take the bits of the wood from it if you wanted to. So I'm going to do just that. So I'm going to take a section of that out of there. And I am going to uncouple it out of there. So bring it out to there. And now it's its own object. So. Let's do that. And I'm going to rename wood log 001. Let's duplicate it. And I'm just going to make like a, a quick little pile of logs, I guess. Um, I'm not trying to you know, teach you how to do something like this because I'm pretty sure most of you guys already know how to do it. So while I do this, I am going to explain to you what the process is going to be to actually do this. So Previously, if you remember, we have dealt with uh, talking to NPCs. Well, the same thing can be done for pretty much anything because we've done it with uh, the weapon, haven't we? We've done it with, uh, well, done it quite a few things. So there's our wood. Uh, I'm going to take our original wood, which is this one. I'm going to bring it down to the bottom with all the rest, and then I'm going to couple everything together into one single object. So if I add in a cube, because that cube is going to be the object which we're able to look at uh, and actually, you know, come up with tape wood. Uh, so let's go 3D object cube, uncouple it from there, and let's make that cube much, much larger than what it currently is. And basically cover the entirety of our wood here. Uh, so we need to increase that to about there, increase the Z to probably about there, I would think bit more there we go and uh, let's turn off the mesh renderer 
And let's take all of those wooden logs, put them inside the cube, and rename that cube to wood pile. So now that is its own object. So we can place that anywhere within our village, rotate it if we want to. There we go, I guess. So next thing, let's write a script which will allow us to, well, at least know that that's something that we can interact with. And I think the best way to do it is if we go to our scripts folder, remember that uh, script that we had, take axe? Well, this is where it's gonna get really clever. I'm gonna hold control, press D, and duplicate that. So that's now changed it to axe take one. And I'm gonna rename that to uh, take wood pile. And let's open that up in Visual Studio. First things first, let's change that public class name to take wood pile. Great thing is we don't really need to change a lot in this. Uh, we can actually rename this to take wood. And then let's go through these here and see which ones we need. So we need distance, we need action display, we need action text, we need extra cursor. We don't need fake axe, we don't need real axe. However, we do need uh, the wood itself, I guess, maybe. I guess we could be a little bit clever with how we do this. Because uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to approach it a slightly different way because I like to experiment with different things and do different things all the time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have public game object wood pile semicolon. At this point, let's get rid of this real axe dot set active true. That doesn't need to be there. And let's change that fake axe to say wood pile dot set active false. Okay, so that is basically a copy of that take axe script. So I'm going to save that just with a couple of little changes. So what I'm going to do now, remember I said I'm going to do something a little differently. I am going to keep the trigger object of that cube in wood pile. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click, create empty inside that wood pile, and then move all those wooden logs inside that empty game object. And I'm going to rename and call this wood object and now I'm gonna turn it off so the actual trigger itself the cube still exists but the wood itself is turned off so we can use that to our advantage because if we go down here we'd be able to set this wood pile as that game object so we can say basically say um, if we go through now uh, if we look at it we want to take the wood. Yes, there we go. All good. If we say, yes, we're taking it, the action button, then that turns off. We turn the wood pile off. We don't need this axe swing. That can go. We turn that off, turn the dialogue state off because we're not dealing with that axe. And rather than destroy game object, we don't really need to do that. So we can actually get rid of that. And instead, we'll say this dot game object dot get component in spiky brackets box collider oh close bracket dot enabled equals false semicolon and save so why are we doing that basically because we can reuse this object later on rather than create a whole new object if we want to create more wood we can just do this and turn it back on at a later date because it's already loaded into the scene saves resources saves game objects saves scripts so may as well do that so that script is saved and let's attach it to our wood pile. So take wood onto there. Uh, make sure you do put it on the cube, not on that game object inside the cube. Um, so wood pile is going to be that wood object. And now we just need to add those bits from the uh, canvas. So action display goes on there. Action text goes on there and extra cursor goes on to there. What I think I might do actually before we go any further is I'm going to go on the terrain again and I'm going to raise it simply because um, we can see straight into the sunlight and it is blinding me whenever we play the game. So I'm just going to add that in. Uh, let's add, gosh, let's have that one just just because and let's raise the terrain behind the village a little bit. There we go. There we go. 
little mountains surrounding the village now. So I'm not going to talk to our NPC. You can see the mountains we've just created in the distance there. I'm not going to talk to the NPC. I'm just going to go straight to the wood and try and pick it up. Take wood. There we go. We have taken that wood. Now, basically, we're able to take that even though we haven't spoken to our NPC. So, I guess the easiest way of getting around that would be to just make the wood spawn when we've spoken to our NPC. So let's just do that. So let's turn off the wood pile. Let's go to our NPC. Let's go into the NPC choice script and let's add an extra variable in here to basically turn that on. So public game object wood pile semicolon all the way down here and when we have start yes done all that quest taken is true let's play let's turn it on somewhere here so wood pile dot set active true semicolon and save and now let's try that out as long as unity hurries up so that wood pile won't actually be there. If I quickly go back to scene view, we can see it isn't there. So it's not worth running all the way over just to you know, see that it isn't there. Ah, you're walking in the bushes. Hey, come back here. Hello there. My name is Emily and I patrol a village. Ah, that's nice. Can you go to the next village and collect some wood, please? Yes, I can. I've, I've just pressed yes what what's what have we done there I think we didn't set uh, the yeah of course I didn't set the wood pile as the variable did I okay so let's try that again so we know the wood pile isn't there let's talk Hello to her there. again my name is Emily and I patrol a village again that's nice can you go to the next village and collect some, some wood, wood please? please yes Yes, of course I can. Thank you. I will see you when you return. Okay. So, she told us she'll see us when we return. And if we go to scene view, we can see the wood is there. So, let's go and pick it up. All the way through the bushes. So, obviously, I think you guys should probably refine a lot of what's going on here rather than um, you know, rush it like what I've done. And there's our wood taken. So... This fetch quest is coming along nicely now. We're getting there with what we're doing. So next tutorial, we are going to basically allow ourselves to go back to the NPC, hand it in, get a reward. So until that next tutorial, thank you very much for watching, guys.